Now we're going to start our work with solving equations by using the addition property of equality. And the addition property says we're free to add the same number to both sides of an equation and we know we'll, we won't change the solution to that equation. Let's try an example. x plus 2 is equal to 6. I think you can see that x has to be 4 for this to be a true statement. That means that 4 is the solution to this equation. But we want to show the process of solving this so that when we get to more complicated equations, we'll know what to do. We'll have a method of solution. So what I'm going to do is start by adding the opposite of 2 to both sides. So see, I've used the addition property of equality to add negative 2 to both sides of this equation. That's because to solve this for x, I want to isolate x on one side of the equation. Since I've got a 2 with it, with addition, I'm going to add the opposite of 2 so that this becomes 0, and then x plus 0 is just x. So we finish the problem like this. x plus 0 is equal to 4. x plus 0 is simply x equal 4. Each of these equations, this one, this one, this one, and this one, are all equivalent. They all have the same solution. This is simply the easiest one to read. So our solution to this equation is x equal 4, and this is the process we use to find that solution. Here's another one. Negative 5 ninths is equal to x minus 2 fifths. I can have x on the right side of the equation just as well as on the left side. So to solve this for x, what I need to do is get rid of the negative 2 fifths. So I'll add positive 2 fifths to both sides. So here I added it on the outside. I guess I don't need that plus sign. So I added two-fifths to both sides of this equation. On the right side of the equation, I have x plus negative two-fifths plus positive two-fifths. That's x plus zero, which is going to come out to be just x. On this side, let's see, I have a common denominator of 45, so this is 18 minus 25 over 45. If I just do that real quickly, and that looks like negative 7 45ths is equal to x. So um, here we have a separate problem where we have to add some fractions, but that's okay. It comes out negative 7 over 45. The important part of this problem, though, is not the fraction part. It's the fact that we chose to add 2 fifths to both sides of the equation in order to isolate x on the right side. So saying negative 7 45ths is x means that x is negative 7 45ths. Let's try another one. This problem right here, I'm going to simplify the left side first before I do any addition, because here I have 4x, and now here I have a term similar to it, negative 3x. So I'm going to add 4x and negative 3x. That will give me just x. x plus 2 is equal to 4 plus 1 is 5. Now, I want to isolate x, so I add the opposite of 2 to both sides. x plus 2 plus negative 2 is equal to 5 plus negative 2. Now, x plus 2 plus negative 2 is x plus 0, which is just x, and 5 plus negative 2 is 3. So you can see I use the same solution process, and I end up with x is equal to 3. Our next problem is a little more complicated. We've got to do some more simplifying first before we apply this addition property. I have 4y minus 3 times the quantity y minus 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. I'm going to start by distributing the 3 over the y minus 6, and I'm going to take the negative sign with it when I multiply. So it'll be negative 3 times y, negative 3 times negative 6, thinking of subtraction as addition of the opposite. So I get 4y minus 3y plus 18. very common mistake for students to make at this point is to write down negative 18. Take the negative sign with the 3. When you multiply, you get positive 18. Plus 2 is equal to 8. Simplifying this side, I have 4y minus 3y is y, plus 20 is equal to 8. To solve this for y, I need to add negative 20 to both sides. I'll show that here. That's the addition property of equality. y plus 20 plus negative 20 is y plus 0, which is just y, is equal to 8 plus negative 20, which should be negative 12. So y equal negative 12 is the solution to that equation. And I found that by first simplifying this side as much as possible, then applying that addition property. Let's try one more example. 8a is equal to 7a minus 5. We haven't been in this situation before with a variable term on one side and another variable term on the other side. Let's get all the a's together over on this side, and I'll do it by getting rid of them on this side. I'll get rid of them on the right side by adding negative 7a to each side. So 7a plus negative 7a minus 5. 
So as long as we add the same amount to both sides of the equation, we know we won't change the solution to that equation. So I chose to add negative 7a to both sides because I want to get rid of the 7a on this side. 8a plus negative 7a is just a. 7a plus negative 7a is 0, plus negative 5 is negative 5. So you want to become very proficient at using that addition property of equality to solve these simple equations.